Hi, it's Anitra, and I wanted to just update since I made the last video I did, which talked about going into the plastic surgeon and revisiting my breast reconstruction, my failed breast reconstruction, uh, and then getting some lipo from the old gut uh, <laughs> and having that fat deposited up into this area. Um, and I decided to postpone that appointment till the fall. And with postponing it, I can decide if it's something I actually want to do or not because I'm leaning toward no. Um, I've increased my weightlifting at the gym and uh, running on the treadmill and just my overall level of exertion uh, with regard to fitness. So I'm just hoping that I can make that those changes that I seek on my own. When I got my ovaries out after I went through this failed breast reconstruction, um, it put me right into menopause, which it does for everybody. And I um, gained 10 pounds, give or take a couple pounds. And um, I always thought, you know, arrogantly, like that I'd be one of those people who wouldn't gain weight. You know, I would like see women who were older and I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to gain weight. Like <laughs> that's not going to happen to me. I'm too health conscious and fitness, you know, inclined. And so here I am, <laughs> you know, having eaten my words from my more arrogant younger self and, um, but I am able to go to the gym more and work out more. And um, I am seeing results, I think. I also, I do my um, immunoglobulin infusions for having low platelets, which is one of the aftermath things that happen um, going through cancer treatment. I developed immune thrombocytopenia and I've done videos on that. Um, and right now my maintenance for that is to do weekly self, you know, self infusion. So, um, so when I infuse right now, it's every week on Tuesdays, I get like even more, you know, fat. I should show it just because I like doing that. <laughs> so that's the, that's one. It doesn't actually look that bad, but sometimes it kind of like balloons out. So like all of this, like extra weight I never had. And, you know, I know for some people, it doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, you, when you just get like used to what you look like and what you weighed and all of that kind of thing, and then you go through like a health challenge, it's hard, you know, it's hard to accept what they call this new normal and, you know, aging and wrinkles and hair loss and thinning and eyebrows not really coming back in. But my new thing is I do this henna well, I actually have a little color on there now, but I've been doing um, this like henna thing with a, um, an eyebrow expert lady and it makes such a difference because neither did my lashes come back like as lovely and wonderful as they used to be. So anyway, all that to say like it's hard, you know, it takes a toll. It's like getting older on its own is one thing and then having like the aging process accelerated by like cancer treatment and all the shit that comes after that. And I think even more so, I mean, I think cancer treatment was not nearly as bad as getting my ovaries out. And I've said that a million times, but I'm still processing it. So that's why I would even consider, I went through seven surgeries in like a year and a half. Um, and people around me knew that I said I would like never do that again. And then here I was thinking about doing it, you know, after two years had passed, actually three years. It's been three years since my last surgery. So um, I did, like I said, so I postponed that. Um, what else? I was thinking of something else. Oh, I wanted to also say that oh, I've been getting my nails done every week. <laughs> right now I'm doing yellow, so, and they're super looking bad, but um, yeah, I that's one of my little treats to myself. It's just a manicure and, you know, not a big deal, but for me, I, I it's not something I did regularly. So like, getting my eyebrows done and having my nails done is just part of feeling good about myself because, um, yeah, I just have never experienced anything like getting my ovaries out. And I did have a call with the man who did it, you know, the Stanford doctor who took my ovaries out and didn't speak to me about it. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And 
I guess it helped, but more than anything, I just wanted to like vent. I just wanted to tell him, hey, this was drastic and I'm still not over it, you know? And then I also spoke to an endocrinologist at, um, well, there's one I'm talking to who has me on Fosamax for um, the, the extreme osteoporosis that I've gotten from having my ovaries out. And then I spoke to another, um, I don't know what, what her title actually is, but some Stanford uh, physician doctor. And we spoke at length about all of the, you know, menopause symptoms, all of the surgical menopause symptoms that I have now. And she has me, well, she said like, do not take testosterone cream, do not take progesterone. Um, and I'm doing a vaginal estrogen and then I'm taking a phytoestrogen. And my local oncologist doesn't have an issue with the phytoestrogen. Um, she thought it was okay. She's definitely against the testosterone. So basically I have like a, the Stanford, was she a gynecologist? I don't know, but she was sort of like a, you know, a specialist in the world of like women's health and hormones and endocrinology. So um what else did she do I don't know she talked about doing kegels she talked about oh taking arginine I think it's called um but she's very against testosterone and the progesterone and what I'm noticing is that especially systemically um I just found a PubMed article that talked about women who had hormone positive breast cancer and the incidence of recurrence by doing systemic hormone therapy um, and it's risky and you know, it's just like I vacillate all the time weekly about whether I want to do it or not do it, do the systemic hormone therapy because it makes me feel so much fucking better. Like that's how strongly I feel about it that I need to curse about it because it's true. It is like the biggest difference in how I feel and I don't think we necessarily know like how impacted we are by, you know, our hormones and going through menopause and going through it gradually, you know, we know things happen like we get more dry, we maybe we like lose a little bit of our energy um and there's things that we can do about that, but when it happens to you overnight, I mean, it's just it's in it's so insane and so I have to, like my friend who died of colon cancer in December, she was 42 years old. Um, she opted to do a fully natural, she attempted to do fully natural cancer treatment. And I was like, woman, you're crazy. You're stage four, like, you know, you have two young kids. What are you doing? But she knew for herself that there was no way. Hey, go lay down. She knew that there was no way she could subject herself to, through the cancer just regimen. She just, she knew that that was not for her. Her mom died pretty quickly from chemo and cancer. And, you know, she watched me go through a really hard time. And, I, you know, she took a lot of flack. And I still don't think she made the right decision. But she made the decision that she could live with within herself, even though she left two small kids and it's so easy to judge somebody and if you haven't gone through cancer you really don't get to have an opinion and that's how i feel i feel strongly about that if you've gone through cancer and you know what i'm talking about and you know the difficulty especially one of the later stage cancers three or four you know how hard it is to be confronted with this life-threatening illness and then having to make these really horrible decisions so I did not support her choice, you know, inside, but I supported her choice as her friend because what else could I do? I wasn't going to shove chemo down her throat, you know, and so I didn't. And I just told her like it made me sad that she made the choice that she made and then she died, you know, I mean, that's how it was going to go. But what I do respect about that is that she had a certain quality of life for herself, um, and I think that that is really important. I didn't know what that meant. Of course, I know that phrase, but actually going through it and speaking to a doctor and realizing like quality of life is fucking so important. 
if you don't feel good about being alive, then why be alive, you know? I mean, of course we all go through ups and downs, but like, I think everybody wants to like, you know, wake up hopeful and happy and grateful and, you know, eager and inspired really right just to like live life like what are we doing with our life whether it's like playing with our grandkids or kids or pets or taking walks or you know finding like the things that bring us joy in in whatever measure that is even in small ways or big ways I don't think anybody wants to live who isn't you know feeling some sort of hopefulness and optimism about being alive so to me that's what quality of life means it's not like i don't know what did i think that meant before but i i don't know i guess i just never thought about it but like not having those qualities is just really not a good life so anyway it's just like i feel i am balancing between feeling good and having energy and feeling like, you know, this buoyant feeling of being alive and not putting myself at risk. You know, it is a balancing act because they want people to go through endocrine therapy. And then I got my ovaries out. And of course, there's still like some, some hormone production, some estrogen production in the body because it doesn't only happen, take place through the ovaries. Um, but I, I significantly reduced the risk by having my ovaries out. So I guess that's a positive thing, but I am occasionally using those three hormone creams and it's risky. So um, I think I'm kind of like going rogue because there's really no data on and certainly no studies. My oncologist where I live said that um, there's just no money in it. So they're actually, they're not there aren't a lot of studies out there. So it's controversial in that there aren't a lot of studies, but there are some studies. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I just want to share that because if I die and somebody's like, I'm laughing, I mean, I guess it's just, I don't know, maybe that's just a vulnerable thing to say if I die. But um, if somebody looks at my videos, you can know and you see this video, like I have experimented because for me, quality of life and feeling like hopeful and excited about life and waking up and like feeling like I have some purpose in the world is very important to me. And like not just staying alive, just staying alive. I mean, that's why people talk about thriving. There's like being alive and surviving and then thriving. And I want to live in a thriving way. So I am feeling like the best I've felt in freaking years I mean certainly in since before cancer so I have a new relationship that I'm like so excited about and feel so blessed by and I know that having this incredible relationship also like brings so much joy to me um, and I do think that just being generally happy and grateful and joyful is really important for healing as well you know and I didn't realize like how shut down I felt um until I felt so enlivened by my boyfriend you know like I tell him I feel like he breathed life into me and like truly I mean I feel like I was like this deflated balloon and he like picked me up on the side of the road and like and like blew me up like a balloon and like breathed life into me and so I feel so grateful um, and I think that that's contributing a lot to just like feeling good overall. But I do also notice that these creams, like they do make a difference. So um, anyway, I wish there were more studies. I wish, wish there was more I could go off of. Um, but also, you know, you, like people's situations are so unique. It's like I went through triple positive breast cancer. It was stage 3B. So I had lymph node involvement, one lymph node, um, and then the the tumor measured, you know, it, it had, I don't know, I have different measurements, but all the way up to like seven centimeters, which is quite large. That's what puts me in the 3B category. Um, and then, but I got my 
my ovaries out and then I also like deal with the platelet issue and so when you start putting in all these details and all the nuances it makes each person's situation a little bit different you know so when someone's like oh I oh I had cancer they had stage zero cancer and I am sorry I don't mean to diss you if you are someone who went through stage zero cancer but it is different than going through stage three going through stage four, like I haven't had metastatic disease, so I don't know what that's like to confront that question. And, you know, other people, if you've had less, if you've had stage zero, it's not the same situation. Cause I had, I've heard people just kind of like blow off like, oh yeah, I had cancer and like, I'm all good now. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, tell me some details. And it was like, it was stage zero and it was like years ago. And I'm like, yeah, stage zero means that it hasn't proliferated the cells around it you know you can it's not systemic at that point so like once it um gets in the higher stages and then you have these like random stem cells i think yeah these random stem cells that cannot be they can hide from chemo and be undetectable by imaging and stuff like that so anyway all that to say i know i'm ranting a little bit but um, each person's situation is a little bit different. Um, so it's really nice to like find somebody who is going through the same thing that you're going through because different cancers act differently. Uh, and even just this whole world of cancer, it's, it's a huge world, you know, Try when I was trying to understand about my friend who died from colon cancer, like just getting into all the details of that, God, there was so much I didn't know because I went through the world of breast cancer. So um yeah I just I felt like saying that um yeah I don't know I'm it's hard it's just hard to uh confront these questions but I feel like we have to make the best choices for ourselves and we have to respect each other's choices and hopefully we're informed hopefully we do research and hopefully we're being true to ourselves and what's important to us because everybody wants to give their opinion and a lot of people give their opinions who have no like they shouldn't be giving their opinions they have no basis in anything to give their opinion because they don't know what they're talking about because they haven't gone through it um and I find that frustrating but to each their own you know I I gave my opinion to my friend one time and I said this is the only time I'm going to tell you this but I want you to do chemo and I want you to at least do surgery because she had colon cancer and she had one node one cancerous node in her lung and I read that the resection resection rate of surgery for getting surgery on that one node from colon cancer that spreads to the lung was like 75% success rate which is pretty freaking high and she wanted nothing she didn't she said like stop talking to me don't tell me we actually didn't talk for a few weeks um, and I said you know my me losing her as a friend is not more important than me saying my opinion. So that's why I told her I'm only going to say this once. You get to choose for yourself, but will you please listen to me one time because I have done some research on it. So anyway, it's... I really don't like having close people around me dying and getting cancer and it's just a scary world. It's a scary world to live in, but... Um, I'm doing my best to make choices that feel the best to me that I can make and um, I keep reevaluating when I get new information. I will be meeting with my medical um, naturopathic doctor, my medical doctor um, soon and I'll, I'll have, I'm doing another series of Dutch test, hair mineral analysis, the, to the toxicity urine test and um, I feel like if I could do those every six months and just know the state of my hormones, I'm really curious to see because there's different types of estrogen that the, du that the Dutch test measures. Um, and so since I've been kind of playing around with some of these creams, I'm really curious to see like are, is my, are these types of estrogens like shooting way through the roof or, or what are they? What is the, the testosterone in my body? So Anyway, I will report back after I meet with her. It's like another month or so. Um, and I still have to do all these tests and stuff. So I'll give the um, information on that and we'll see if I'm really playing with fire or what what the deal is. I also take Cruciferous Complete. It's one of the um, 
standard process formulas and that has like a whole cruciferous um you know whatever it's got brussels sprouts broccoli and stuff like that which are which are also anti-estrogenic so i guess i'm giving my body a little bit of mixed information because i'm doing some anti-estrogen stuff and then i'm putting on estrogen cream so <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's crazy but i will report back after my doctor appointment probably in another month so if you made it this far oh my god i can't believe it and thank you um thanks for following my journey i'm just like you know, moving on from life, from cancer life. And um, until and unless I need to revisit that, which I hope that I don't, I'm, you know, you can know that I'm just like living my life and having fun and being joyful and being active and running a business and, and doing and doing what I can. So you want to see a cute dog? Hi, Tanky. Oh, you're blurry because it's, there she is. <laughs> Oh, so I'm just living my life and, and trying to uh, just be happy and healthy for as long as I can. So take care. Hope you're well. And um, yeah, send any comments that you feel and bye. <laughs>